It's Mrs. Wolbrin, long time no see. What you doing, guys? It's Mrs. Klein. And we're here with your Lesson 7 podcast. This uh, Lesson 7 is the American Revolution. The guiding question is, how was the Continental Army able to win the war for independence from Great Britain? We have some key vocabulary words, which are ally, American Revolution, Continental Army, and strategy. All right, here you go. Here we go, you guys. If you'd like to be looking along in your history book with us, you can open to page 119. We're getting to go in here with the introduction. When the American War for Independence from Great Britain began in 1775, 15-year-old Joseph Martin was too young to join the Continental Army. But when recruiters returned to his Connecticut village a year later, he was ready to join the cause. The recruiters were looking for volunteers to travel to New York where the British were rumored to have 15,000 troops. That's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. I did not care if there had been 15 times 15,000, Martin said later. I never spent a thought about numbers. The Americans were invincible, in my opinion. Wow. Just two days after the Declaration of Independence was signed, Martin traded his plow for a musket, an early type of rifle. A week later, he arrived in New York City, where he hoped to snuff a little gunpowder. As he recalled, I was now what I had long wished to be, a soldier. I had obtained my heart's desire. It was now my business to prove myself and, excuse me, to prove myself equal to my profession. If Martin had known what lie ahead, he might not have been so pleased about his new profession. The army in New York was ill-trained, ill-equipped, and just plain ill. (laughs) Yeah, they were pretty (laughs) sick, weren't they? (laughs) Yeah. Almost the whole regiment are sick, reported a Massachusetts officer of his unit. The British Army, in contrast, was well-trained, well-equipped, and well-supported by the British Navy. Rather than the 15,000 troops Martin had heard of, the British had assembled a force of 25,000 men in New York, with more than 400 British ships in the harbor. This was the biggest army and the largest fleet the British had ever sent overseas. Although the Americans faced an overwhelming force and should have been easily defeated, they were not. In this lesson, you will read how the soldiers like Joseph Martin stood up to mighty Great Britain in a successful revolution that created a new nation. Yeah, remember, it turns the world upside down, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay. All right, you guys, moving on to the first section. Um, it's entitled American Strengths and Weaknesses. Okay, the Patriots were in a vulnerable position when the American Revolution began. With a small Navy and a hastily organized, untrained army, the Patriots' weaknesses were far more obvious than their strengths. The Continental Army was always short of men. Few Americans were trained for battle, and the army was plagued by shortages of supplies that they desperately needed. Okay, but they did have some strengths, you guys. Still, the Americans did have strengths. One was the patriotism of people like Joseph Martin, who willingly gave their lives to defend the ideal of a country based on liberty and democracy. The Americans also received help from overseas. Motivated by their old hatred of the English, our good friends the French, Mm -hmm. (laughs) secretly aided the Americans. The Americans' other great strength was their commander. Yeah, we had a great leader in Washington. Definitely, with with our General Washington. Now, let's talk about the British. And they also had strengths and weaknesses. Now, in contrast to the American colonies, Great Britain entered the war from a position of strength. Yet, despite both their real and their perceived advantages, the British forces encountered many problems. Uh, Some of the British strengths, with a professional army of about 42,000 troops. so many people. Yeah. At the beginning of the war, British forces greatly outnumbered the Continental Army. That's a huge strength. It totally is a huge strength. And and then the British and Hessian troops were well-trained in European military tactics. You guys remember, these are like mercenaries that the, the British have paid to come and help fight their war. Mm-hmm. All right. And they were that that was their job. They were it wasn't like they were farmers and gave it up. It, they were trained to be soldiers. Yeah. Okay. The British forces were well supplied as well. Unlike the pitifully equipped Continental Army, they seldom lacked for food, uniforms, weapons or ammunition. OK. Now their weaknesses. Believe it or not, the British had weaknesses. <laughs> um, the war presented Great Britain with a, a few huge problems. One was the distance between Great Britain and America. Yeah. Think about that. 3,000 miles. That's a long way. It's a long way to ship everything. Absolutely. Yep. 
A second problem was that King George and his ministers were never, never able to convince the British people that defeating the rebels was vital to the future of Great Britain. So they didn't have the people behind them. There you go. Which is a total opposite thing than here in right. here with so many people wanting to become involved. Yeah. And the third problem the British faced was poor leadership. Okay. All right. So we've got a good leader. They've got poor leaders. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So besides this, you guys, I think the, that we, despite their weaknesses, Great Britain actually almost wins the war. Yeah. Yeah. And um, after the British abandoned Boston in the spring of 1776, Germain came up with his first plan for winning the war. He planned on using the French forces in America, led by General William Howe. I'm sorry, did I say French? French, you meant British. Okay, let me say that yeah. again. <laughs> he planned on using the British forces in America, led by General William Howe, to capture New York City. From the base, Germain hoped to win the war by moving the British troops north to destroy the rebellion at its heart, Massachusetts. All right, there you go. They've been the target all along, haven't they? Okay, all right, so we've got uh, information, you guys, about African-Americans in the war. Even before independence was declared, a number of African-Americans had joined the Patriot cause. Black militiamen, both free and slave, fought at Lexington, Concord, and Bunker Hill. Early in the war, however, blacks were banned from the Continental Army because Washington did not want the army to become a haven for runaway slaves. In contrast, the British promised freedom to all slaves who took up arms for the king, which resulted in thousands of runaways becoming loyalists and fighting for Great Britain. Yeah. Now, a shortage of volunteers soon forced Washington to change his mind. By 1779, about 15% of the soldiers in the Continental Army were African Americans, and large numbers of black sailors also served in the Continental Navy. By the war's end, Vermont, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania had all taken steps to end slavery. Yeah. So this is going to take us to New York, and we actually suffer a defeat in New York. Yeah, pretty, pretty substantial. Yeah. On August 27th, 1776, the American and British armies met in Brooklyn, New York, for what promised to be a decisive battle. The inexperienced Americans were no match for the British, who had greater numbers and superior training. All right. And we lost that We lost battle. that battle. Okay. The battle for New York City was the first of many defeats for the Americans. In the weeks that followed, British forces chased the Americans out of New York, through New Jersey, and finally across the Delaware River into Pennsylvania. Well, um... By the end of 1776, the British also thought that the war was just about over. General Howe offered to pardon all rebels who signed a statement promising to remain in peaceful obedience to the king. <laughs> obedience. There you go. Yeah. And thousands took him up on oh that offer. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. Okay. All right. The crisis. Washington knew that he had to do something quickly. Gathering his last troops together, he read to them from Thomas Paine's new pamphlet, The Crisis. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country, but he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Yeah. And next, after reading that to his men, uh, Washington outlined a daring plan to attack Hessian troops who were camped for the winter in Trenton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Late on December 25th, 1776, Washington's army crossed the ice-choked Delaware River in small boats. When the Americans reached Trenton, they found the Hessians happily sleeping off their Christmas feasts, probably a little drinking there too, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Caught completely by surprise, the mercenaries surrender. News of Washington's victories electrified patriots. We had been needing a victory. We definitely needed that win. Okay. And this. I'm end this podcast right now, you guys. It's quitting time. And we'll talk to you soon.